There's like possessed children screaming outside. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is amazing, guys. Um, I would love to tell you that I was up till 4 a.m. and I didn't get anything done, but you guys asked for it, and therefore I'm going to deliver. This is the best MacBook that Apple doesn't make. And why is it the best, you might ask? Well, number one, because it's like a quarter of the price. Number two, because it's, it's, it's Razer. i7, 16 gigs of RAM. Graphical acceleration works. Everything on this hacked together MacBook works, except for, well, Nvidia's graphics card, but that's, that's Nvidia's fault. We're not gonna blame them for that. And as you can see, this Razer Blade is running the latest version of macOS Catalina. Everything works from the internet card, but we will talk about that one later, to NVMe storage, to SATA storage, because this is the base model. And yesterday I was up till 4 a.m. trying to fix the audio. And I would love to tell you that I'm super pissed and that I wasted my time, but today morning, I fixed the audio. So just before we begin, let's take a look at that beautiful animation. So guys, this took a very long time, but it was so worth it in the end. I am so happy that I managed to make this work. And I'm sure that a lot of you are going to absolutely love this. I'm sure that this is going to help quite a lot of people that need Mac OS for, well, a bunch of different reasons, or want to actually make it their primary OS on their Razer Blade, because this is the latest version of Mac OS Catalina 15.4. I think that's what it is. It, there's a four in there somewhere. Guys, I need to drink some coffee. <laughs> Let's get that mug sip in. Everyone wants this, I know. That actually burns, so worth it. So guys, if you want to do this, I'm going to make your life super easy. My entire EFI folder, my OC folder, is going to be down in the description below. So in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do this, but don't worry, you will not need to code anything. I will give you my EFI folder and you will just need to transfer it to the USB drive that you will be installing macOS Catalina from. I love you guys. So all this hard work was done for you and I hope this helps you out. Let's begin. So you guys are insane. Of course, Eric for president gave me a shout out yesterday. I absolutely love that guy. If you guys somehow don't know who he is, his channel will be down in the description below. I absolutely love him. I watch all of his videos. He's great. So this is absolutely insane. You guys are amazing. The number of people watching these videos is now all the way up to 8.4%. So if you guys like this video and you're part of that 91.6% of people that aren't yet subscribed, make sure to subscribe, ding my bell, become part of the 360p gang, follow me on my social media here and here. I want to hear what you guys want to see. Join our discord, join our read it and let's begin this video oh my god i'm so excited okay so i actually begun my installation by exchanging the hard drive and i actually have a separate video that i will be releasing for you guys today on how to add a hard drive to your base model because i was asked to do that but moving on the next thing that you need to do is you need to replace the wi-fi card because the wi-fi card in your razor blade is not actually compatible now, of course, you could go without Wi-Fi, but that's just not really an option in 2020. Thankfully, I work in a computer shop, so that wasn't too hard to get. Now that you have your Wi-Fi card replaced, you're actually pretty much ready to go. Now you need to boot back into Windows and you need to edit your BIOS. Yes, you need to edit the BIOS, but this isn't actually as hard as you might think. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. What we need to do first is we need to extract the BIOS. So type CD, drag the folder into the terminal and press enter. I will have this exact text tutorial for you guys down in the description below, but basically what you want to do is you want to copy this command and paste it into your command prompt. Then you want to press enter and you will be asked for admin rights. Then the software will proceed to save your BIOS to a file that we can later on edit. Once this is complete, you will find the file in that exact folder that you have the BIOS extracting software in. Next thing you want to do is you want to open up this software right here. This is the software that will allow us to edit that file that we just created. So click file, click open, browse for a BIOS file that we just created, open it up. So then what you want to do is you want to click on the first folder, click on setup, then click on chipset. So you want to stay in chipset and you want to select system agent configuration and change it to user. This will basically give the user, which is you, permission. Once you have done that, all you want to do is click on the save button and that is going to save your modified BIOS file. So once you're done that, you want to go back to this page here and you want to copy the last command. This command is going to flash your modified BIOS onto your laptop. Now, please do remember that there is always a risk that comes with this and I can't be held accountable for anything that happens. 
Next, it's going to ask you for admin rights and it's going to proceed flashing your BIOS. Once this is complete, your laptop might blue screen, mine did, but if it doesn't, just reboot. So once you have that done, you need to go into the BIOS and set the following settings. You go into the BIOS by spamming the delete key when your laptop is turning on. Once you're there, go into chipset, go into graphics configuration, and then set DVMT pre-allocated to 64M. This is actually the only setting we're going to need here, so after that you can just spam escape, go to save and exit, and save changes and reset. Now believe it or not, when I was actually flashing my BIOS, I got like a massive heart attack because my computer blue screened when the thing was at 90%, but it seems fine, so we're good on that one. Okay, so that's actually, believe it or not, the hardest part done. When you have the Wi-Fi card replaced, and when you have your BIOS flashed, you're done. That, that's, that's literally all you need to do with modding your laptop. That's it. Let's move on to the fun part. So this is really simple. You're going to need a USB stick of about 16 gigs or higher. I would recommend 16 gigs. Some people say eight is fine, but I would recommend 16 or higher. So once you have that, you want to plug that into your computer. You want to launch Gib Mac OS. Now, once you've launched Gib Mac OS and you want to choose the latest version of Mac OS. So we're going to choose that right here and we're going to let that download. So the next thing you want to do once this is complete is you want to open up make install inside that Gib Mac OS folder. So once you have opened up make install, it will ask you to choose a USB drive. So you want to choose the USB drive that you're going to put the installer on. I'm going to choose my Kingston drive, put a space and the letter O after that. Press enter, it's going to format the drive so anything that was on it will be lost. Next thing it's going to ask you is it's going to ask you for your folder. So you want to enter all these folders like so. Find the folder that Gib Mac OS downloaded Mac OS Catalina to. Go up here, click copy and paste that file path into the make install command prompt. Press enter. This is going to take a little while, but when it's done, you will have the installer for Mac OS on your USB stick. So once this is done, you want to open up the boot partition that has now showed up on your USB stick. When you open that up, you're going to be greeted by an EFI folder. You want to enter that. What is happening? Is somebody getting like, did you guys hear that? <laughs> once you enter that EFI partition, you're going to be greeted by two folders, boot and OC. Delete both of those folders because we are going to be replacing those with the EFI folder that I created for you guys. So basically open up the RAR file that I gave you guys and drag the files from my EFI folder, the boot and the OC folder, replacing the ones that were on the USB stick earlier. Now you want to go to your laptop, plug in the USB stick, start spamming F12. Select the USB drive that you have your installer on and then choose the number that says external next to it. So we're going to choose that. And now we're going to wait for the installer to boot. Once the installer boots, you want to go into disk utility. You want to find the drive that you want to format. You want to click on it. You want to click erase and you want to just give it any name you like and format it as APFS. This is very important because the new Mac OS Catalina uses the APFS file format. So once you have it formatted as APFS, you want to close disk utility. You want to go back. Now you want to connect to the internet. Now, once you've replaced your Wi-Fi card, you should see the internet icon show up. So you want to connect to the internet, click on reinstall Mac OS. Just agree to everything, select the drive that you just formatted and click install. This is going to take a while, but once it's done, you basically want to spam F12 again and go back into that USB drive. It should automatically boot to the new partition, but if it doesn't, you can always just select it by pressing the number. So now we wait again. This is going to take a little longer because it's finalizing the installation, but once this is done, you are actually going to boot into Mac OS Catalina. That's it. That is literally it. I fit like six hours of work into a 10 minute video. And I am, I'm insanely proud for some reason. I don't know why. It's just like, it's very satisfying when something works out in the end. And everything works from the trackpad to the battery indicator, to the Wi-Fi, to the Bluetooth, everything, including coming out of sleep mode. Check this out. It takes a little longer, but it does come out and everything works. Kill me. <laughs> So guys, that is going to be it for today's video. In a future video, I'm going to release the benchmarks of this thing on Mac OS X because I believe a lot of you might want to see that. I really, really hope this video helped you out. I worked really hard to make this for you guys and uh, I'm insanely happy that it worked out in the end. So again, if you guys liked this video, make sure to give it a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too, but make sure to tell me why in the comment section below. 
If you have any issues, also tell me down in the comment section below. I will do my best to help you. If you guys like this video and you're part of that 91.6% of people that aren't yet subscribed, make sure to subscribe. I post tech videos daily and VR videos on Mondays and Fridays. Join our Discord, join our Reddit. I'd love to see you guys there posting spicy memes. And if you want to be notified of future content, make sure to subscribe, ding my bell, and see you again in the next one. Peace. Thank you.